The cosmos is devoid of any separateness. Everything in it is interdependent, and the cosmos itself is devoid of anything separate from the entire universe. The belief that there is something separate, substantial in the universe is a direct testimony to the ignorance of the mind. In terms of the ultimate existence of the world, any single phenomenon has the same nature as all other phenomena, so that all phenomena share a single reality. In the ultimate sense, all phenomena without exception exist harmoniously, even if they appear as opposites. But man and the world are not the same in the ontological sense. Unity is an experience. Our experience of the world becomes one, and does not exist as some real physical unity or multiple unity, implying the existence of only one thing. Every day when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we see ourselves not as we really are. First, because of the time delay, about one billionth of a second, since this is how much time light spends on the path from our faces to the mirror and back to the eyes. What we see in our mirror and in the space in which we are, is only an average of billions of wave functions that resemble us, but are not accurate. According to the laws of physics, a collective lens inverts the image of an object. Both the cornea and the lens are collective lenses, so the image also falls on the retina in an inverted form. After that, the image is transmitted along the nerves to the brain, where we get an afterimage of what it really is. Our vibrations are spreading out in all directions. We are surrounded by other dimensions and worlds constantly in every second. We are in front of a mirror and at the same time we are not in front of a mirror, just as it is impossible to say that we are not there at all, or that we are in one or another period of time, so it is impossible to say that it does not happen at the same time. Reality is not possible to be discovered in its true form, because we do not see things as they are. We perceive colors as a result of the fact that light reflected from an object falls on the retina of our eyes, and the nerves transmit a message to our brain. The colors we see depend on us, the states of the nervous system, and the general psychophysical state. We construct our experience of the world, which means that we are no longer able to experience the world as it is, because we experience the world as we want to experience it. Reality cannot be conditioned by the mind. If the world were conditioned by the mind, it would not be the world, because then it would change every time our mood changes, but it does not. There is only a change in the experience of certain things, but the things themselves remain neutral, into the neutrality of which the clouded mind cannot penetrate. We may be able to experience reality directly through deep meditation, but living on a relative level of reality is forced to pass through our sensory and interpretive experiences. Everything is distorted by the work of our own mind and by the states in which it is located. We cannot claim that there is a reality until we have found out what exactly prevents us from directly experiencing this or that thing at any given time. Take, for example, the same mirror. What we experience as a mirror is more our version of that mirror, our own version of the world, our own version of other people. When we are overcome with sadness, the street cold, frost, slush, mud, gray clouds and cold begin to line up in relation to this feeling. But when we feel over the moon with happiness, even slush, frost, cold and mud seem to be something beautiful and beautiful. Although at one time or another, both frost and cold, along with mud and slush, as they were, and remain neutral. They just are. When we are in love, the object of our love becomes one with us, and it seems to us that we experience unity. But if this object changes the trajectory of its movement and behavior that were not authorized by our mind, then our connection with this object collapses or undergoes strong changes, clinging to our own version of love, which was constructed by the mind at the moment when the object of our love fluctuated in unison with the constructions of our mind, makes us try to change the object of our love or reality, so that he or she returns to the state in which both reality and object once fluctuated in unity with our constructions and ideas about what love is, what relationship should be, how man should behave, how woman should behave, but you can't go back anywhere. All that can be returned is the identity that was created at the moment of experiencing relative unity and love with this or that object. In reality, we can live with the same person for years, but not with him as such, but only with our own version of this person, and use the external object as a measure of whether it corresponds to our idea of him as an object today or not. Only a long path of purification of the mind can lead to the fact that in a quiet and calm state, when the egocentric, mental and emotional chaotic activity of the mind is reduced to a minimum, almost to nothing, and if it is manifested in the mind, then in an instant it is dispersed by a clear penetrating vision of pure consciousness, then only then, perhaps, can we experience true unity, 
and therefore be closer to people, things, the world and reality, as much as it seems possible to us. The enlightened mind will not be emotionally overwhelmed or intellectually confused about what it is experiencing. First of all, an enlightened person will strive to comprehend things as they are, carefully making sure that things do not appear to him, being colored in shades of certain states of consciousness, on the basis of which he would make his final judgment about the object, which we do around the clock. We need to develop unity, because almost everything we experience is constructed by our mind. As soon as we begin to understand the nature of the mind, we begin to open up to the oneness of all things. By developing pure awareness, we become able to see reality as it is, instead of seeing it in an exclusively fragmented way through the prism of our mental constructs.